I have no religion because religion is a concept by our pharaonic masters to manipulate us for their goal of total domination. And that's why all monotheistic religions come out of the Middle East, the origin of our pharaonic masters. Here you see the 42 principalities of my art and all the 10 commandments are in it. Like here, I'm peaceful, number three. That means thy, thou shalt not kill. I live in truth, number seven. Thou shalt not lie or thy shalt not bear false witness, etc. They're all, all 10 are in it. And here you can see the pharaohs, you know, with their slaves. So these rules are basically the slave rules and also the rules for the people, the, uh, the people of uh, ancient Egypt, because there were the pharaohs, you know, like the nobility, there were the people, and there were also the slaves. So these rules were for the people and the slaves. And by the way, you see the scales here of a serpent. Right? So you see the difference in the faces, you know, the difference. These are the pharaohs, look at their faces. And these are the African Nubians, you know, the Nubians. So for those, you know, the who, who say that the, the pharaohs, they were all Africans, well, it's complete nonsense. Just look at the picture. Yeah. So the whole religion, this is this is where it comes from, you know. And you know, I'm peaceful. Thou shalt not kill. They kill us by the millions. You know, they put the, put us in all those wars, and we're not allowed to kill them back. And they steal everything of us: our, our dignity, our land, our our freedom, and we cannot steal back. They lie. You know, look at those politicians. They lie without end. Uh, we cannot lie back, so that's it's it's a big advantage for them, you know. If the slaves they are very obedient and they behave in this manner, so I am not a Christian, and in this video, helping you how to read your Bible. First of all, a true Christian should not live in a republic and adore the republic like these MAGA Americans here because their leader Jesus Christ was killed and crucified by the republic and fought against the republic of Rome because Jesus was the king of the jaywalkers out of the royal house of King David. So here it says MAGA on the cross here, and it means make America great again, which is a slogan by this guy here, Trump. So all these fanatic and patriotic American MAGA Christians are no real Christians because they collaborate with the murderers and torturers of their spiritual leader. So here it says the Republic of Rome, here you go, and here with the Statue of Liberty it says US Republic of America. America is in fact the reincarnation of ancient Rome. Both are republics, horizontal rule. So why, as a Christian, would you honor and collaborate with the new Rome? So here to the left, you can see, and here it says, the capital of Rome. And here the same thing to the right, the capital of USA. And they are both horizontal republics by the same masters. Uh, Rome was a horizontal rule republic with a senate like in America. That's why in the US Senate there is the Fasces, 
which is the Roman symbol of a horizontal republic. So the US Republic honors the Roman murderers of King Jesus. So here you can see the Senate, here you see the, the Fatsis, here a, a, bit, a bit larger. It says Roman Fatsis is the horizontal rule symbol of all republics. Why? Because here are branches, you know, tied together with this string here. And one branch, you can break it, but all together you can't break it. So the old world or the vertical rule is being ruled by one branch, meaning the king, like King Jesus in this case. The republic is being ruled by many people. That's why it's called the horizontal rule, because they're all together, like here, horizontal. They're all sitting at the same level, you see? There's, there's nobody higher, or maybe a little bit here, but it doesn't mean anything. And that's why this new system, the horizontal rule of the republic, it has an X here because it's really the biggest weapon and the best way to rule over the slaves. So merely by this, you know, in the US Republic, they are basically honoring the murderers of King Jesus Christ, an earthly king, the king of the jaywalkers, with a crown of thorns on his head. Jesus, king of the jaywalkers, was from and a descendant of the vertical rule of royal house of King David. That's why Christ in Greek or Messiah in Hebrew literally means the anointed one. After an old pharaonic tradition to oil the feet of an earthly king or pharaoh. So here it says, King Jesus from the royal house of King David. And here you see the crown of thorns with the crown beneath it. So here it shows the internal war within Pharaoh's nobility. So here it says, this is Rome here, the Senate, and it says horizontal rule, Republic of Rome. And here, you can see Jesus of the king of uh, the house of King David, the vertical rule by King Jesus. And Jesus was, in fact, the victim of this internal war within Pharaoh's nobility between the horizontal and the vertical rule. So here is the Christian cross and here the flag of the most powerful republic and horizontal rule of all times. And talking about crosses and resurrections, America is the true resurrection of the Roman Empire in the sense of being a horizontal republican rule against the vertical rule of a king and jesus it says jesus was tortured and killed by the republic which is a horizontal rule symbolized here by the flags horizontal red and white lines so why do fanatic american christian patriots honor the horizontal rule, Republican murderers of their leader. You know, what happened in Rome, which was a horizontal rule republic. So why do Christians honor the republic? Well, because they don't read their Bibles properly and certainly don't abide by the biblical words, as it says here, it is not a sin to use your own brain. About which I explain more in this video here, Vertical Church versus Horizontal Temple on the same channel. And please watch that because I won't repeat everything in this video here. So you can see the title and 
the same channel. So in this picture, you see on the left side the Protestant priests, and it says here horizontal rule, Republican Protestantism, versus here on the right side, you see the Catholic priests, and it says vertical rule, kingly Catholicism. And although everything has changed now, in its origins, the vertical church is the Catholic Church related to a king. And the horizontal temple of Protestantism is related to a republic. That is why the vertical rule of a king is officially called the divine right or divine rule. Then, what would be the name for its opposite? And a republican horizontal rule? A satanic rule, maybe? Well, logically, the opposite of divine rule would be satanic rule, wouldn't it now? So here you see the, uh, lo the, um, the coat of arms of the, the British monarchy. And the lion sim symbolizes the, um, the, the royals, the kings, the pharaohs. And on the other side is the, uh, the republic, actually, the Knights Templars. And that's why here you see the compromise, Oniswaki Malipans, uh, for the Order of the Garter. And here it says here, divine right is vertical divine rule. But this here is interesting. It says here in French, Dieu est mon droit. Dieu, it means God. A, it means and. Mon, it's my. Droit, it's right. It's, so it says God and my right. It's another way of saying divine right which is um, related to the left side, of course, but also in this picture here to the right side, because the Republic has taken over the horizontal rule. It's not a compromise, actually. There was a, um, there was a trap, you know, because England is a royal republic. You know, it's a horizontal rule, actually. So... These ones here, they took it over. So if this side here is the divine right, then this, the, the vertical rule, then the horizontal rule by the Knights Templars and their Freemasons would logically be the opposite and the satanic rule. Wouldn't it now? The Bible talks about the prince and principalities as the evil one and his rulership. Here, and here it says, the Knights Templars were the princes. Here you see the Knights Templar, hidden. Here it says in the Bible, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places, Ephesians 6, 12. So then, what is a principality? A principality is a rulership by a prince or by several princes, like the state of Andorra, is a principality, with Macron being the prince of Andorra. So here it says, anagram for Macron. It's like using the same letters, M-A-C-R-O-N. The anagram for Macron is monarch, a monarch. And in French, you write it without the H. The same letters as Macron. Could that be a coincidence? Maybe. And here it says the prince, he's officially the prince of the principality of Andorra. Sar 
It means Son Altesse Royale, His Royal Highness Macron, because any prince is a Tsar, which in the Demotic Pharaonic language, it means the king or the pharaoh, like in a sarcophagus, which is the box to put the king in when he's dead. And I went filming in Andorra, but uh, they just took my film off. You know? I didn't get, get any notice. It just disappeared. It's not there anymore. I probably said a couple of things too much. Maybe this video will disappear as well because I I say these things. Other people who say these things about him being the Prince of Andorra, they have no problems. But apparently when I do so, I get uh, censored and you know, I just disappeared and all of those sort of things. Shadow banned. The Knights Templars were also called the Princes, as they were the second, third, fourth sons of a king, duke, count, baron, or other lord of a castle. By the law of the primogenitor, only the firstborn son getting everything. So here it says, Knights Templars were second, third, fourth sons of the nobility, called the Poor Princes. And here you can see them, you know, around the octagon and the Templars' cross. And I repeat this here from Ephesians 6.12 from the Bible. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. And in Europe, there are quite a few principalities like Luxembourg, Andorra, Liechtenstein, Monaco, which are actually all havens for tax evasion. As the Knights Templars, you know, they were all about money eventually. But initially, they were poor princes. Therefore, the Templars depicted themselves as two poor noblemen, without a castle nor an empire, needing to share one single horse, out of sheer poverty. So here you can see them both sitting on one horse here as well. This is original stuff here. And it says, two poor princes sharing one single horse. And these Templars had and still have their supreme prince called the Grand Master, who got burnt alive in 1314 for being a Satanist in front of the Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris. So the supreme prince got burnt by the divine rule of the king for being a Satanist and a Sodomite. So here it says, the Grand Master of the Knights Templars, also called the Supreme Prince of the New World Order, Horizontal Principality. The Knights Templars finally won the internal war within Pharaoh's worldwide nobility, as I've explained in the Swiss Beast series. And the princes founded their horizontal republic, where the princes can rule together in a so-called horizontal rule and having one supreme prince called the president. So here you see the whole principality together, all the princes. And here you can see the supreme prince, whom we call today the president, standing on the stairs, you know, like on the White House or of the White House or the Kremlin or whatever. And it says the princes, because they're all princes, they're second, third, fourth sons of the nobility, and they are those who we call princes. The princes created their collective principality. You see, it's collective. They're all together. It's a principality by many princes, which means it's horizontal. 
So again, the prince has created a collective principality, now called the Republic. So the Bible's principalities are the republics, where the princes can rule together in a parliament and senate. And each republic principality has its supreme prince called the president. So here it says here, you can see Prince Biden. There he is. Prince Putin. And here Prince Macron. The princes and their principalities. Switzerland was their first principality in history founded in 1291 where seven princes or seven heads of state rule like the beast with the seven heads and also with the principality of Liechtenstein the stone of light being the deep state Switzerland right next and inside Switzerland so here it says 1291 Switzerland, the first Templar princes, their principality. And this is a map of Switzerland. And as you can see, it looks like a pig. You know, here's the leg, here's his, you know, his, uh, his nose, here's a tail. And even the Swissies themselves, they call it the Swiss pig, you know, because it looks like a pig. And here, where the eye is, lies Liechtenstein, which is a German name. And Licht, it means light. It's almost the same word. And Stein is stone. And remember the seven hills of Switzerland called the seven prince electors or the sieben Kurfürsten. In my video here, Helvetic Horror. Heidi. So here you can see the seven prince electors, and Switzerland still have has today uh, seven heads of state. And here's that film, Hel Helvetic Horror Heidi, and Homeland Security. Here in Matthew chapter twelve, verse twenty-five to twenty-six from the Bible, the internal war of Pharaoh's nobility is being described. And it says, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house, which is a royal house, divided against itself shall not stand. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall then this kingdom stand? So here it says here again, Matthew 12, 25, every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. This is the a kingdom divided against itself. This is the internal war within the nobility because a kingdom is being ruled by the nobility. And every city or house, a royal house, divided against itself shall not stand. This is the internal war between the, the princes here, two guys on one horse because they were kicked out of the castle. So they didn't have enough money for each one his own horse. And it was the internal war between the, uh, these ones founded the horizontal rule against the divine right and vertical rule of the king. It's all here, you know. And here it says, internal war of princes and principalities against the king and his divine right. You must read the Bible as an historical and political book. The even entire chapters and books within the Bible are called kings. You know, the Old Testament, it's, it's only about kings and genocides and murders. And, uh, well, the white man is not even in it. So. I mean, why bother, you know, take it as something divine, sort of, you know. So it's all about the, um, it's all about the nobility, even the New Testament. 
you know, because it's about uh, Jesus Christ uh, out of the house of King David, which is the divine right. You know, that, that's what the whole divine stuff is coming from. You know. So it even says in the Bible, which for me as a historian, it's, um, it's, it's, a, it's an ancient and, and very powerful book. And remember that the end times chip is being developed in this age of horizontal rule republics, also called principalities, ruled by the Knights Templar princes and their Freemasons. So I read it for you here, and he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here's wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it's the number of a man, and his number is 666, Revelation 13, 16 to 18. So I see this, this part here, as the political part of the Bible. <clears throat> you know, it's all explicable, you know. And before I explain you, was the historical Bible, you know, about the internal war being described, about the principalities, who are the princes, and the Knights Templars are the princes, and they made the Republic, and this is the result of all this. The Bible is historical and political. I don't see any religious hocus-pocus. I mean, it's, it's all logic, and it's, um, I mean, we're here. It's, it's, it's um, understandable, you know. And um, I made a video once, about um, what the 666 is. I, I made it maybe 20 years ago and I published it um, 14 years ago. I'll show it to you. So here it is. Um, I made it 13 years ago in the beginning of 2012. And here's the title. It's on my channel, Gatsefrats. Well, you can start with reading this here. The Bible is a very interesting historical and political book, and it is a manual for Pharaoh's slaves how to behave and how to be obedient to Pharaoh. The Bible is an Oriental book by and for the Middle Easterners and not for Europeans or Asians since it doesn't even talk about Europeans or Asians, as the Bible stops at the Mediterranean, because the alleged all-seeing God didn't see any land nor people north of the Mediterranean. But as Pharaoh's nobility has taken over all the power in Europe, and taken the white race as their slaves, the political problems described in the Bible are real, because the masters have taken their political problems and their internal war between the vertical king and horizontal princes with them from Pharaoh's land in the Middle East, into Europe and Asia. So here you see the 42 ideals or principalities of Maat and the 10 commandments of the same book, of this book here, are, are in, within the, the 42 principalities of the goddess Maat. Here you see the opening of the sea, meaning uh, the pharaoh, the pharaohs, they disappeared within the sea of peoples. Of course, the sea didn't open like that. It's all symbolical. And it says, the Bible is an historical and political book containing the slave rules. 
forget about the religious hocus pocus because on the level of our masters religion plays no role at all as religion is only to manipulate the slaves and the dumb slaves always find for sole answer for the things they don't understand that it therefore must be supernatural like the magic bullet here well let me tell you the bible is not supernatural hocus pocus we're not in the superstitious middle ages anymore so use your brain believe me there's not one single world leader who believes in god allah or any religious book because they're all princes of the republic having their supreme prince called the grand master why in grand master the word master well because they are our masters and the masters of this world as the nazis were talking about the master race or aryans being pharaoh's nobility and that's why they have these castles you know and this was also a principality with the 101 horus wings here and the um, skull and bones of the freemasons and they were pretending to fight for the old world order and bring the german emperor back until the old world order discovered it too late that they were betrayed and tried to eliminate adolf in 1944 on uh, i think it was the organization of july 20th with uh, klaus von stauffenberg the colonel so these are the Aryans, and this is their principality another one of the principalities and being part of the big templar principality so it says the nazi ss wevelsburg castle of the Aryan, which comes from the pharaonic demotic a ri on i already explained that to you ah it means pregnant ri the son on osiris and that means Osiris was born from out of the sun of the Aryan pharaonic nobility. It must be clear now, a long time after the Second World War, that the Germans are not really the Aryans, are they now? Eh? <laughs> These are the Aryans and the worldwide master race. And this is why behind every japanese emperor is amaterasu the japanese sun god representing of course the pharaonic amun ra as in the flag of japan therefore in world war ii the empire of japan teaming up with europe's old world orders like germany and italy in this endless wars between kings and princes and it says the japanese sun god amaterasu from amun ra you see ama from amun and here's the word ra as here they all have the same origins and, and look look what look at the long nose you know this is not very japanese the nobility always have these long noses and look how he's cross-eyed you know they all have some sort of thing you know like an arm that doesn't work like tsar nicholas and uh, uh, the emperor william ii of germany uh, this guy is cross-eyed and as i told you before you know it could be himmler i mean i mean look at it it's very much the same because it's the same master race you know they're all over the world and they team up in world wars and let us the dumb slaves fight for them and in fact those who were teaming up with uh, japan and their sun god 
the word Nazi is very much related to the word Nazir, used in the Middle East and origin of Pharaoh's nobility, which means a prince, as in a principality, because they were the princes. It's all out of the Knights Templars and the Freemasons. Look here, skull and bones, Freemasonry. Here is uh, Horus, you know, there's another sun god here. Uh, they, these of, with these sun god here, here's the sun here b below, and here the wings of Horus. They were teaming up with the other guys on the other side of the world with, with their sun god. You know, and here it says Nazi from Oriental Nazir, meaning prince, as in principality. I've, I've, I just told you so. I mean, here you can see all the proofs. And the word Nazi, in fact, as uh, in the Middle East, you know, uh, with and, and all the lies, you know, going on there, it's not as the Philistines say, it's from a Nazi jaywalker. Well, this Z-I, I'm not, I, I cannot pronounce it because of the censorship, but it's not Z-I-O-N, as they say. It's, uh, it's complete nonsense, nonsense. So, as in Arabic, Nazir, it means the prince. So the word Nazi has, has actually more Arabic in it than it has jaywalker stuff in it. Although the jaywalkers, they have the same word for Nazir, almost similar, meaning the prince, as in a principality. This is what this political and historical book called the Bible warned us for the Nazir princes and their principalities. And now, today, each republic and each constitutional monarchy has their supreme prince, president, ruling over the slaves, with each prince or president being part of a brotherhood or fraternity as in the French revolutionary Freemason slogan, Liberté, Égalité, Fraternité, meaning freedom, equality, fraternity. Here it says the brotherhood of princes and their various principalities called the Republic. And on top of all these Freemason fraternities, of which all prince presidents make part of, there is the Templar Brotherhood fraternity, with a grand master being the prince of princes and ruling over many principalities, the supreme prince grand master.